This video will cover the definition and interpretation of mixed venous O2 saturation. First, I want to cover the definition very quickly, and then we'll talk about how mixed venous O2 saturation fits in into the greater scheme of the economy of um, oxygen in the blood. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit more about it um, in terms of arterial venous O2 saturations and uh, con consumption and talk about how to interpret changes in mixed venous O2 saturations. Strictly speaking, the definition of mixed venous O2 saturation is the saturation of oxyhemoglobin in the pulmonary capillary just before it reaches the alveoli. So this population of hemoglobin right here, after it reaches its lower level, lowest level of saturation, just before it gets reloaded and reoxygenated to go to the left side of the heart. Typically, we don't have catheters in the distal pulmonary artery, so we can't necessarily measure this oxygen saturation very conveniently, but we can measure it right here in the vena cava, and it largely is the same. The only difference is that the blood that enters the right side of the heart um, also gets a contribution from the um, coronary sinus, which is the drainage of the heart back into the right atrium. And typically, um, this blood is extracted to a greater degree than systemic blood. And so that always makes this saturation here a little bit lower than what you measure here in the superior vena cava. But because these are largely equal and they largely reflect the same whole body oxygen consumption versus supply relationships, we simply go by um, saturations in the vena cava um, if that's all we have. Uh, when thinking about the economy of oxygen in the body, there are three terms that are very important to know. One is the content of arterial oxygen, so-called CaO2. The other is the content of venous oxygen in the body. And the third is the amount of oxygen that's consumed, VO2. So arterial oxygen content has two components. One is bound, that which is bound in hemoglobin, which is 1.36 times the hemoglobin times the saturation. This is O2 sat that you'll read on a pulse ox. The other component is dissolved. And this is pretty minuscule. It's 0 0.00. 3, 1 times your PaO2. And so in healthy patients, this is typically, say, 15 to 18 mils of oxygen, and this is less than one. So this is fairly negligible in the greater scheme of things. So when this um, oxygen leaves the arterial circulation and goes down to the tissues, it is consumed. Consumption is VO2. And that which is returned is the content of venous O2. And this is the exact same term as over here, except that the saturation is going to be different. So this is normally going to be something like 1.0. And this is where mixed venous O2 sat comes in, because that will tell you how much has actually been consumed, hence V.O2. So this is still, when you think about you know, mixed venous O2 sat, um, the dissolved oxygen is even less, so that can be ignored. Um, and as far as bound, the constant's gonna be the same, the hemoglobin's gonna be the same, the main change is gonna be the saturation. And that's basically what we're measuring here in a CVP line, um, central venous O2 saturation. This is what we're measuring here in the art line. And here's what is very hard to measure um, often unless you have kind of a metabolic cart that can assess oxygen inhaled and CO2 exhaled. So all these components are tied together in the Fick equation. Except that has one thing that is not shown here, and that's a heart that's actually working. And so when your heart starts pumping blood,
we start talking about um, per minute O2 consumption of oxygen, not just a snapshot as was shown here, and that becomes V dot O2. So the Fick equation tells you that V dot O2 is basically the difference between arterial oxygen content minus venous oxygen content times cardiac output. The latter term becomes important because when the main, comp the main thing to think about when you're dealing with critically ill patients is really what is being consumed here and how does that relate to what is being supplied on this side over here. And when we talk about supply, we talk about DO2, which is oxygen delivery. It's unfortunate that demand is also starts with a D, but does not get to have the DO2 term, and that is V dot O2. And oxygen delivery is basically content of arterial oxygen times cardiac output. And again, if you kind of recognize that this is a pretty negligible term, this is a constant. And at least for arterial oxygen, the saturation is pretty close to 100% or 1.0. Um, DO2 is essentially hemoglobin times cardiac output. Okay, so here's a cleaned up diagram of what we just talked about, um, essentially showing that the left heart is supplying blood to the tissues. This is oxygen delivery, or in economic terms, supply. And V dot of 2 is consumption. In economic terms, it's demand. And really, the best readout of supply to demand relationships is going to be the central venous O2 saturation, which sometimes we call mixed venous O2 saturation, which is SVO2. So let's talk about how to interpret a mixed venous O2 saturation. And the best way to describe that is to sort of think about um, the heart as this pizza delivery service. And so this is a 100 gram pizza. Not the prettiest thing on the planet. And a certain amount's consumed. Turned out to be that 25 grams is consumed. So it turns out to be that that is just a quarter of the pizza that's being consumed. And then when it's returned to be resupplied with pizza, it turns out to be that only one quarter has been consumed. So basically, the body's disease, this body is dealing with a lot of reserve capacity wherein most of what's being delivered is coming back to be reloaded. And indeed, these are pretty normal values here. So a mixed venous O2 saturation um, of 75 is pretty normal. Um, so again, going back to grams though, so this is 100 grams that's being consumed, sorry, it's being delivered, 25 grams is being consumed, and so 75 grams remain, or 75%, since we're measuring in terms of saturation. So here's kind of a thought problem, and that is, let's say I have a catheter inside someone's vena cava, and so this is saturation of the blood that I'm, being, that I'm able to measure in the vena cava, um, and this is time here. And let's say this is the, uh, that normal value of 0.75. Sorry, that's a little bit scrunched. And so we're kind of cruising along here. Um, not much going on. And then all of a sudden, my saturations are dropping down to 50%. So the question is, is what happened? And indeed, this is basically what we are doing in ICUs when we measure mixed venous O2 saturations. We have some 
the value that we're starting with, or maybe we're just starting it to begin with. Um, and then there's some change, and we're trying to interpret that change. And so, could this be cardiac output? Could this be someone that's bleeding? Could this be someone who is consuming a whole lot of oxygen? Absolutely. In fact, any stop along the way here can account for a change. Um, and so, really, there's three things that relate supply and demand of the body. And so, um, since this is a supply-demand relationship, we have to think, well, what dictates supply? Cardiac output does, and hemoglobin does. This is ignoring all those other small insignificant terms. So this is your supply, those two terms. And here's your demand, V.02. And um, you know what regulates V.02 are things like wakefulness, uh, muscle motion, muscle mass. Are you shivering? Are you febrile? Do you have endotoxemia? Do you have malignant hyperthermia? Are you fighting, you know, are you a muscular guy fighting the police in four-point restraints? You know, your behavior and basic metabolism are going to regulate feed auto too. So basically, if your mixed venous O2 saturation is dropping, it could be that demand has gone up or supply has gone down. And so let's just elaborate that on elaborate on that just a little bit here. So let's say this is because this is a per minute function, this is 25 grams that are being consumed every minute. And so let's say our cardiac output was once five liters per minute, but now it's a lot slower. And so one of these pizzas is passing through, used to pass through the vascular bed about that speed. And at that speed, 25 grams is being pulled off of every pizza. Well now, if my travel speed is much less and my consumption is about the same, well guess what? Now two pieces are gonna be pulled off. Basically that's still 25 grams a minute, but that pass being very slow meant that to keep those tissues happy and to allow their consumption consumption to be the same, the pizza is now returning much more empty. In fact, only 50% there. And hence, your mixed venous O2 saturation is a lot less just on the basis of cardiac output. So let's think about hemoglobin. So let's say these pizzas are a little bit anemic. And so instead of 100 gram pizza, these are really thin now, and these are 50 gram pizzas. So before the thickness was like this, nice normal hematocrit, and now you're running really anemic, a lot thinner. So again, these thin 50 gram pizzas are passing through here at a regular speed. Um, 25 grams are being removed. And that turns out to be half a pizza now, not a quarter of a pizza. And so the pizza can come back. And when you measure its saturation, it's going to be 50%. And then finally, the easy one is basically what if consumption goes up? So let's say that you know our normal state was once 25 grams per minute. Now it's 50 grams per minute. A uh, pizza is coming around the circulation, same kind of speed. Um, consumption is twice as high, comes back twice as empty, 50% saturated. So there's no great, you know, there's no clear answer on what happens, what's the cause when all of a sudden you see the mixed venous of 2 saturation drop. What you have to do is consider when this measurement was made, what's the difference relative to there? So Assess bleeding. Was there bleeding? That could be it. Was the overall activity level a lot higher? Is this like an awake patient that's fighting you and now they're sedated, paralyzed, anesthetized? That could be, you know, an account or actually kind of the opposite. They'd be consuming less. But you get the idea. Um, or all of a sudden, is my heart suffering? Is my consumption, I'm sorry, my, is my um, 
cardiac output less than it was before, and can that account for um, the difference that we see? Okay, so I'll summarize this whole discussion with um, another figure that just ties it all together. What we're really talking about is a relationship between supply and demand of oxygen here. So here's the supply, and basically um, because this is an economy and everything has to add up to the supply, that equals the demand for what's been consumed, and what's left is the mixed venous oxygen content plus the flow through the venous system. Um, this is the dependent variable of two other independent variables. So, you know, you can bleed, you can take EPO, your hemoglobin will change, your cardiac output will change according to your activity and your function, your demand will change according to your muscle mass and your activity level, and what's left over is how that, how those two functions relate to one another and how it's read out by analysis of mixed venous um, oxyhemoglobin saturation. So if you think about this being able to move, this being able to move and shrink and expand the whole um, set of bar graphs, what's left is really this readout here. And so that's another way of thinking about all of this. Hope this um, made sense and that you can use this. Um, this is actually a very clinical, clinically relevant topic that has to do a lot with how we maintain and evaluate circulatory homeostasis in critically ill patients. Thank you.